We currently rebuild our indexes every weekend as per the recommendation of our ops team. We're starting to worry about how long they are taking. How can I speed them up? There's actually a very easy way of speeding up your rebuilding the indexing, and we're going to talk about that today. Why do people rebuild? That's the first question I always ask is why do people rebuild their indexes? And this is the most common response is it told me to. Now, what is it when, I, when it comes to it told me to? Well, it's us, unfortunately. And when I say us, it's the internet. I went out and just had a quick search on the internet literally this morning when preparing for this topic here today. And this is what you find. Be aware, index space is never reused. Next one, nothing you can do about it. You have to accept the fact that reorging indexes is part of your life. Regularly build your index. Schedule a batch stop to rebuild your index. Oracle server does not reuse index. Rebuild all the index. There's a ratio. If deleted roses, the Oracle suggests dropping weekend. Oracle index is not self-balancing. It keeps going on and on and on and on. All of this stuff is out there on internet land today, on blogs, in manuals, in books, everywhere. There's just this kind of thing. Just you just need to suck it up and say, well, that's just the price of doing business with the Oracle database. You need to rebuild the indexes from time to time. And the best thing is all of that is total hogwash. Don't believe you read on the internet just because there's a, uh, a picture and a quote, some quotation marks around it. Most of those previous sentences are just fiction or they have some very tiny layer of truth in them, but most of them are just fiction to prove to you how often you need to rebuild your indexes. I thought we'd go with a metaphor. This is a dictionary. It's a, as you can see, it's the Macquarie Budget Dictionary. But you can see, I spent $15 on, this is just like an index. Why is it just like an index? An index in Oracle is entries stored in order. Unlike a table, a table's like this. In fact, here we go, we have, I even have some ice. When you put rows in a table, wherever they go, wherever they end up, doesn't matter. We don't care, it's called a heap table. But indexes are different. Indexes are things stored in order and dictionaries are obviously stored in order. They start at A and they go down to Z or Z, depending on your accent. Everything is stored in order. A dictionary would be useless if it was not stored in order. Let's explore adding and deleting entries and seeing if we have to actually do anything in terms of rebuilding to get to preserve space in our index. Let me open up to a random page. Oh, look, it's only got three words on it. Oh, that wasn't that fortuitous that I landed on this page. The three words are common, complex, and compound. So there's the three entries in index order in the section that starts with words that start with C. Let's assume that I do something with this index, the table. I'm going to delete a row. I'm going to delete, oh, let's see, I've got the, uh, the blue tag there. I'm going to delete complex. Now, do I need to rebuild this page? It's now got an empty space in it. Well, not really. What if someone wants to put some data back in? Well, if they put complex back in, well, that's no problems, is it? It just goes straight back in. It costs me nothing to do that. But let's uh, delete complex. What if I want to put the word compete in? That's different. But as luck would have it, compete fits in there as well. So as we take this back to an index structure, if I delete entries and put the same entry back in, no problems. If I delete entries and put different entries back in, but they still fit nicely in terms of index order, no problems. I didn't have to do anything with my dictionary. It works fine. Let's make it perhaps a little bit more realistic. What do we often do with data in tables? We delete the older stuff and insert new stuff. That's a bit different, isn't it? Because now we're not sitting on the one page here. Now we're looking at stuff at the start of the index or the dictionary. So let's grab an early page. Oh, here we have, how fortuitous again, only three entries on this page. We've got aardvark, abacus, and about. So once again, things at the very, very start of this index. So if this was time stamp information, this would be the oldest data. What do we often do? Well, we delete the old stuff. So oh, delete that one, delete that one, delete ah, that one. Now it's totally empty. Hmm, that's a problem, isn't it? Because I don't want to put any A's back in. I want to put in stuff that's new, stuff at the other end of this dictionary, stuff that starts with Z. I want to put Zany in. If I was looking after this dictionary, if I was a librarian or book, bookstore person, well, I've got an empty page now. I'm not going to leave it here. I'm just going to take it out. I'll just slot it in the back where the Z's go. Because it was totally empty, 
it doesn't I don't need to keep it up here anymore do I so maybe I can just whack Zany in and then when we add some new data like Zebra that can go in there as well and finally Zeal I had a hard time thinking of Z words once again the number of pages in my dictionary hasn't grown there's nothing wrong there so from a dictionary metaphor if I delete information I can reuse the same slots if I delete lots of information I can actually reuse the pages elsewhere you can't do that in a real book without tearing pages but that's what I would do if I could with a index that is a dictionary the question is is a dictionary really like Oracle can Oracle do the same Are Oracle index is the same well let's have a little play let's repeat some of those tests using real Oracle indexes so I'm going to create a table here called T1. It's got 30,000 rows simply from 1 to 30,000. I'm going to delete all the multiples of 5. So I'm literally scattered throughout the entire table, deleting all the multiples of 5. So if this was our index, literally every fifth page is an entry roughly I'm deleting. You can see the size of the index is 66 blocks in size. That's among the leaf blocks. There's a couple other branch blocks, but it's 66 blocks. If I put the same values back in, I deleted all the multiples of 5, put all the multiples of 5 back in. What happens? My index doesn't grow at all. It's just as it was before. Just like when I, well, I've lost my seeds. When I deleted complex and put complex back in. Right? No change to the index. Let's delete old data like the A's and insert new data like the Z's. So here's my table again, 30,000 rows from 1 to 30,000. I delete all the early rows from 1 to to 5999, the first 6,000 rows roughly. The index is 66 blocks. I put brand new rows at the other end, at the Z end of my dictionary. So the rows used to go from 1 to 30,000. I'm inserting 30,001, another 6,000 rows. I deleted 6,000 down here and inserted 6,000 up here. And guess what? The index is still 66 blocks. It's unchanged. Let's now do different but fitting. This is the example where, with my C row, where I took out compete and replaced it with complex. What happens if I have rows that would fit in order, but they are actually different values? So I'm going to create now a table, which is all the multiples of five, 30,000 of them. Still only 30,000 rows, but all the values are five, 10, 15, 20, etc. I'm going to delete all the multiples of 30. The index is slightly bigger now because it's not one to 30,000. It's 5, 10, 15, each number is a little bit bigger. It's one more block, 67 blocks. I deleted the multiples of 30, but what I'm putting back in is different values, 32, 62, 92, still shifted by 30, but they're two out from the values I deleted. I deleted 30, I'm putting 32 back in. I deleted 60, I'm putting 62. That's like this one where I'm putting a different value in, but it still should fit in index order. And guess what? The index doesn't grow either. All these kind of operations, an index rebuild is simply not warranted because the index hasn't grown anyway. It's simply the same size. You get no value by rebuilding that index. Maybe this is the one. Let's go completely random. Here's my table again. What vote values 1 to 30,000, 66 leaf blocks. And I've written some PLS SQL. I pick a random value between 1 and 30,000 and I delete it on line 6. Then I pick a different random value from 1 to 30,000 and I insert it. And I'm doing that 100,000 times, right? That's a lot of iterations, just over and over. So we started at 66 blocks. What do we end up with now? 82. The index has grown. This is like, you know, that moment when Captain America holds the whatever it is sword that Thor owns and Thor goes, I knew it. I knew there was a reason I needed to rebuild. Let's uh, proceed. Let's keep going with that demo. So I've done 100,000 iterations. I ran another 100,000 and it went from 82 to 97. I ran another 100,000, went from 97 to 110, then 119. The index continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's out of control. You might be thinking this is the worst case scenario. Totally random deletes, totally random inserts, but maybe applications are like that. A customer deletes his record, some other customer inserts a record. Maybe we do need to rebuild. Let's keep going again. And don't forget, each one of these is 100,000 delete and insert pairs. It went from 129 to 131. And then 131 to, oh, 131. In fact, it stayed at 131 no matter how many times I did those 100,000 deletes and inserts. 
we sort of reach this equilibrium point. All indexes in Oracle have what I call like a steady state generally. They have a size at which they will be happy, for lack of a better term. If I'm only ever deleting old data and inserting new data, then the odds are the index won't change at all in size. If I'm deleting data and inserting the same data back in, the index won't change. But even here, as you can see, if you're deleting and inserting completely random data, if the number of rows in the index isn't changing, it will ultimately sort of come to a steady state. And typically it's about two thirds full. That's just the way B tree indexes actually work. They normally end up around about 70 to 60, 65 to 70% utilized. In that way, they simply won't grow. But even so, you might be thinking, it was 70 or so leaf blocks, now it's 130, I need to rebuild it. So you rebuild it, and it'll take it all the way up down to 66. But if you have an application that is always doing 100,000 deletes and inserts of random data, guess what happens? As soon as you finish rebuilding it, and normal activity resumes, it will simply grow back up to its equilibrium point. So what are you achieving here? You're simply saying, let's burn a lot of temporary space, let's burn a lot of redo, let's burn a lot of CPU and memory to shrink something down, and all that's going to do is grow to that same size again anyway. And while it's doing that, it's doing what we call leaf block splitting and branch block splitting. You're actually running your indexes slower and burning up more redo just to come exactly back to where you were before. Don't get me wrong, there are a couple of particular scenarios where you need to rebuild. But the vast majority of scenarios where you have indexes in Oracle, the rule of thumb is real simple. Do nothing. For the initial topic of this, which was how do we speed up rebuilds? Really, really easily, you simply stop doing them. And then you really, all you have to worry about is if you do see indexes that continue to grow in size and never reach an equilibrium point, they never hit that sort of 60% full and stay there, they're the ones you would then consider looking at remedial action. But you'll often find the number of indexes that need that in your database is commonly zero, and very rarely indeed. So key thing here is to speed up rebuilds of indexes, stop rebuilding your indexes.